The Night is a 2004 novel by Jane Wolfe, and it is the first part of a duology or kind of a long novel, depending on how you view it, called The Wizard Knight. It opens with an epigram, or a poem, by Lord Dunsany, uh, and then we get a map of the cosmology, the planes going from Niflheim to Elysium. Um, so, got some Norse and Greek stuff going on. And then a dramatis personae addressed to someone named Ben. And our narrator sits and writes of his adventures, and this writing is a letter, so it's an epistolatory novel. And while at a cabin, he hikes, he, um, well, he cuts himself a walking sta uh, staff, and he sees some things, including a fortress in the sky that he follows into Alfreja. Um, the land of elves, the fifth world, apparently. Uh, he gets his a new name, Abel of the High Heart. I kind of have a guess on what his real name is, but we're not going to mention it here. Uh, the old one is not told to us. And some other things are mentioned or not mentioned, I guess, which seem pertinent to later in the like. And they make sense later on in the story, and maybe some will make more sense as I read The Wizard. This is a buddy read, so I'm recording this one in advance as I read The Wizard next month in uh, November. But then again, when you're reading Wolf, often learning something later is actually just learning it on a reread as it's actually a good idea often when you read wolf is just to reread it after finishing it but essentially this kid gets transformed into an adult that's the premise and he goes on some mythical adventures as a knight in places like Mythgard, which is really like the world this alternate world that's taking place in but there are other mythical realms um and it has some romantic fairy tale feeling a kind of a blending of many such things and the aging transformation doesn't seem to be immediate in the story. It takes a couple chapters. It does seem to be after a nymph sexual encounter. <laughs> but there is an important character uh, in a, well, a few characters actually. There's Bold Beartold, um, who is older and thinks Abel is his brother that he hasn't seen in a long time. Another is a knight, uh, Sir Ravd. And there's also the hound Gilf and Sutter and Garsedge and Yuri. Uh, and Desiri, and Pook, and many more. We have a smith named Waylon, a king and lady named Morcane, a nurse named uh, Moduguda. Uh, so if you, you can see some of these connections maybe that I see when I... A lot of these names mean something to me. Uh, some of them I'm not quite sure on, but uh, for example, the first chapter we have the Alf, right? Garsedge is mentioned. A guy named Saxnat is mentioned. Uh, and this whole idea or place of Alfritja, um doesn't really give you a pronunciation guide, uh, but these are all actually, the ones I just mentioned are actually all Old English, uh, so I know how they're pronounced, but uh, he doesn't help you there, so um, I'm not sure how you'd say Garsedge, Garseka, it's Garsekge, Seeksneet, you know, like, instead of Saksna, anyways, um, there actually is a, a version, I think the one on the screen right now, uh, that has an instruction by um, Iv Menar, uh, Minach, uh, which is who the book is dedicated to, um, Eve, me now. Anyways, yeah, some French name. Uh, I haven't read it. I don't have that version of the book. Um, but otherwise, sorry, that's mostly an aside. Wolf avoids some arc awkward things, or rather, our narrator avoids some awkward things sometimes. But he also starts getting more comfortable in his letter. The first, the beginning, seems to be skipping a lot. Um, like sexual content is shown well, in this case, but it's also embarrassing for the writer. Um, along with his passage of time. Uh, it's not always clear, um, as, you know, the, the, or some of the, a few chapters take several years, for example, um, but with a little story told us in those several years. Also, journeying to fairy with time going faster in the realm of humans is not fully explained at first, not fully explained really at all, it just kind of gives you hints and ideas to help you parse together stuff that has happened already and stuff that's happened there will happen later. One thing I think that's really interesting, kind of central to this uh, story in general, actually, is the word knight itself, which comes from the old English word knicht, uh, which means, well, it's where the word knight comes from, but it really just generally means a boy in old English, as many young boys also play at being knights, right, obviously, uh, this kind of seems like, a, I'm going to take this word knight, and I'm going to use that, right, and so we have a young boy that's pretty much this knight, and you can tell he's used even though he's... Um, well, not young, really, physically. So I think it's a fantastic approach, so, and it's a fantastic novel with many allusions, many, many allusions, references to myths and romances of old and other newer things as well. It's also very much a fairy tale. It's very easy to read, though. Some words are maybe more particular, but is narrated by a young boy who will admit to not knowing a word for something, actually, some, from time to time. So it's really not that hard to read either, especially compared to something like The Fifth Head of Cerberus or Book of the New Sun. 
It has a simple plot that leaves you wondering where it's going as it wanders along. Uh, you want to pay attention, I think, but because it is Wolf. It's a fantastic adventure of our young hero who learns much and also has some innate power. And also, kind of, we get an idea of what it means to rule or to be a knight in general. We do get a look at some things like sooty elves and... We have uh, this narration that seems to be made in Alfreda. It's being written to this Ben character in Alfreda after all the events have taken um, taken place. It also, has spiny orange, which belongs here apparently, and not in America or Mythgard. Um, and we do have much that's not explained, like uh, Svone running. Uh, also, I think the word sh I need to double check this, but I swear the word shield, as in the money was originally spelled an H and became an SC at one point. I don't know. I need to double check that. An SC would be a SH in Old English, though. I also have things like the, the Nicker, N-Y-K-R, which is a um, like a Nicor in Old English. It would be Nicker in Modern English. It's Nixie is another Modern English term from it. That one comes from High German. So we have a lot of stuff like that popping up. Um, one of the best jokes, actually, here is, uh, is um, there's a great joke about a shield and a guy named Bao, which is a Beowulf joke, and I, it made me laugh out loud. But I don't think most people will notice that one. Also, there are several American things mentioned. are broadly accessible, I feel like, to most readers. It's just kind of funny to have these Americanisms thrown into this fantasy story. Um, also, there's a Green Knight reference that is also in... Well, it is... At the same time, there's a reference to the Three Hearts and Three Lions by Paul Anderson reference. So anyways, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I'm really looking forward to the next book.